Hi everybody, um, I'm here again with the next session of the Graduate Ambitions podcast. Um, as always, I'm Lisa Brennan and um, we will be here to give you more information today on Moy Park and the opportunity that they have, opportunities even that they have available on the early careers um, job market. And today we are joined by Vicky uh, Chenchi and Atif Alam. And I will hand you over to Vicky and she will tell you a bit more about her role at Moy Park. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I'm Vicky Chenchi, Early Careers Coordinator at Moy Park. Um, I've been with Moy Park for 11 years now um, and doing a couple of roles throughout that time. Um, now, my current role is um, our department is responsible for anything early careers. So that's graduates, placement students and apprentices. Um, and yeah, we're really about, you know, recruiting. And um, once um, we have the uh, candidates, successful candidates on the programme, it's all about making sure that they're developing and that everything is going smoothly on their programme so that they, they come out of their programme with a, a great opportunity in Moy Park. Fantastic. And, and Atif, tell us a bit about your role. Hello everyone, I'm Atif. I'm a final year technical graduate here at Moy Park. I started with the company in the summer of 2016 as a placement student and I've moved around a little bit, but now I am a final year technical graduate here in Craig Avenue in Northern Ireland. So I started off in England and now I've moved over here. Yeah. I think it is really it's really good that we'll have both perspectives here and especially, you know, from you, Atif, you've you've joined, you know, as you said, as a placement student, you know, so you've been through that experience and then also you've you've progressed on to, to being a graduate and you know starting to build a career um with my park. So it'll be really interesting to hear everything that you've got to tell us. Um but but yeah, I mean, for some of the people who are listening, they'll be familiar with Moy Park because um, I know that Nicola last year came on and joined our um, Q and A sessions, and she gave lots of great advice, um, you know, and tips to um, the students and graduates that were attending for their um, job search applications, selection processes. So, so some people will have a familiarity, but lots won't. So, it'd be good to hear a bit about you know, what What does Moy Park do? What is the company all about? What's the culture like there? Yeah, um, so Moy Park, if you don't know us, um, it's one of the UK's top 15 food companies and it's Northern Ireland's largest private sector business and one of Europe's leading poultry producers. So we produce a diverse range of poultry products. So that um, covers fresh, um, coated and ready to eat categories. We supply leading retailers and food service and fast food service. And restaurants throughout the UK, Ireland and Europe with high quality poultry products. Um, but we're not just all about poultry. Some of our sites um, across Europe and GB um, produce beef patties, rashes of bacon, fruit pies and coated cheese products. Um, and we're really proud that over 5,000 restaurants in Europe have at least one Moy Park product in them. So you may not necessarily have recognised the Moy Park name, but I'm sure um, plenty of people have tried some of our lovely products. Um, now, in terms of our culture, um, our vision is really important to us and it's really key to drive in our early careers programmes. So our vision is to become the best and most respected company in our industry, creating the opportunity of a better future for our team members. Now, that is really centred on four pillars. So that's um, become a more valued partner with our key customers and um, relentless pursuit of operational excellence and um, providing a safe workplace and um, environment for safe people, safe products and healthy attitudes and a unique portfolio of diverse complementary business models. And as I said, um, touched on there, our early careers programmes are really built on this structure and we want to create the best programmes focused on creating opportunities for our team members. So our values um, are really important to us um, and they are what guide us in our activities, help and shape our culture at Moy Park and um, drive us to succeed. And now we have seven values and these are ownership, discipline, sincerity, humility, availability, simplicity and determination. And with over 10,000 employees, Moy Park is a really large scale organisation. However, it is very um, people focused and at the heart of our business is these seven um, core values. They're really important to us. Yeah, and I think actually those core values are really important for any prospective candidate to be aware of because, you know, 
the more that they align with those core values, then the more they're going to align with any role at, at Monty Park. Um, and I think it's quite refreshing, actually, as you spoke and, and talked about, you know, what what Moy Park is um, working towards, you know, what, what the aims are. You know, it's not all just like, you know, about being number one in your field or being like, you know, so business orientated, but a lot of it is about, um, you know, the community and, and the, the people um, and, and the people within your client groups as well. And, and I, I've seen that from your uh, website as well. You know, and, and even in the background image, actually, of, of what you've got on screen, um, Vicky, this passionate about local farming and quality. And I think that's so important now for so many people um, to have that local connection um, and to work for a company that's that's really supporting those local communities. Definitely. So it's, it's, it's great to hear that. Um, and so what... In terms of um, kind of that wider um, equality, inclusion, and diversity aspect, how how does that fit into your your culture at Moy Park? So um, our DNI and belonging strategy really focuses internally and externally of Moy Park. So it's based on three pillars that are really important to us, and the first being creating an environment where all our team members can make the difference. Um, which means education and training for team members, employee groups on gender and menopause are just some of some examples of um, schemes that we've got going at the moment. It's all about removing barriers to development opportunities. And it's important to us that we are seen as an inclusive employer and um, an organization that you can join and you can make a difference. And that final pillar is all about the best governance. So using data to inform our decisions and plans um, when we consider um, diversity, we also include generation um, generation differences in the workplace, and we are running communication group sessions with managers, mentors, and early careers employees, really focusing on those generational differences and increasing awareness and support. Yeah, that sounds really good. And you know, I love that. Um, you know, when when you just even spoke about the diversity and inclusion, that it's also got this belonging aspect to it. Um, and I think that's something that's becoming more and more prevalent now. Um, that organisations are realising this isn't just about you know, um, having like you know groups in the business that see you do this that and the other thing but it's actually having people as you say that could come in they can be themselves they can see where they can add value and um, because they are themselves and it, it really can give them that sense of, of belonging um, you know and and that for me is a, a really huge part of inclusivity um, and I know from hearing from the students and graduates that we work with that it's something that they are really looking for from employers. So, so yeah, I think that will be a really popular aspect um, that will draw people to, to Moy Park. Um, but what, because obviously I, I mentioned you've got your early careers um, roles that you're applying in advertising and you know you, you've got your programs that are in place and um, so tell us a bit about the roles that you've got available um, at the moment. Yep so we're actually um, live with recruitment for two programs at the moment the graduate program um, applications are open until Sunday so that's the 12th of December that's when applications close um, and we also have our rotational placement program and um, now both programs are um, we're recruiting for now and that will the start of recruitment processes now but the both roles um start in september 2022 mm -hmm. so our graduate program it really is a fantastic um program development program which creates fantastic opportunities for graduates to grow their careers in a fast-paced and innovative industry to become a future leader at moy park and um, with the right aptitudes and attitude graduates can excel in their careers at moy park and will be supported on their journey throughout the program to inspire them to succeed now, graduate programmes that we are recruiting for are available in um, functions such as agriculture, agri-technical, um, commercial, sales and marketing technical, which is where Atif um, is, is currently on his programme. We've got a finance programme, operations, um, supply chain, commercial innovation and development and engineering. So we've actually got nine programmes that we're recruiting for for next year's intake, which is really exciting. 
Um, now, in terms of criteria, um, we ask that um, the graduates have a level two one or above. And now certain programmes require a, um, a degree in a specified discipline. So, for example, engineering, you would need an engineering based degree. But there are some um, some programmes that are open to any degree discipline. And the information is in on the application section of the website when you're applying. That's all detailed on there. Um, and as I've said, um, the closing date for that program is the 12th of December. And then we have our rotational placement program, um, which is a fantastic opportunity for students to gain an insight into the food industry and the breadth of roles available. So all our rotational placement students um, from um, benefit from a structured plan that enables them to have hands on experience on a minimum of two areas of the business and um, whilst being provided with a project trained mentor and modular development program. And um, the rotational placement program is really um, it's your chance to um, demonstrate your leadership qualities um, and your um, passion for a career in the food industry and successful candidates of this, pro this one year program. And um, if they would successfully completed the program and um, your progress will be reviewed and any outstanding candidates would actually be offered a direct um, role on the graduate program after they finish university so it really is a fantastic opportunity and it's it's perfect really for students if they're unsure of exactly which area of a business they want to go into so you know lots of people don't exactly know where they want to end up so this gives them an opportunity to spend time in a couple of different areas across the business and before they make that decision so those functions that were around the rotational placement program is um, commercial engineering finance hr operations, process development, supply chain and technical. So yeah, that's a really fantastic opportunity that we're really excited about. Yeah, and it's really good because I think as a, as a student and, and probably if you're, you're better to kind of let us know if this is true or not, but I, I always feel that as a student, it's difficult to even know what types of roles companies have available or you know when you talk about operations what what does it actually mean and what are the individual roles that even fall within that so having you know this rotational program is is a good way of seeing that I don't know if that's what you found um Patty. no that's exactly it because I mean when you're in university and you're in second year and you're thinking right okay I want to go for a placement and you you kind of know the industry but you don't know companies yet and you don't know exactly how these large scale companies work and you're thinking, right, okay, I know I want to work in the industry, but I don't exactly know where that's where the placement year is. It fits in so perfectly. Is that right? Okay. Get experience in different departments, figure out what you like, figure out what you don't like, and then go from there. And if you can shine in one and you feel like, right, okay, no, I felt like that, that was the one for me that's the one you can go for then and yeah. it it doesn't make it so you have to decide so early on in your life because you're only 20 at that point I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you have everything in order at 20 years old then brilliant great for you but <laughs> I know yeah not me. I know <laughs> it, exactly exactly so you want to you want to get a little bit of a taster in everything so that's exactly what the placement you offers is just a little taster into different things yeah I think as well, it, it's really good to hear the the variety of, of different, you know, opportunities like having those nine different programmes that, that, you know, you're um, inviting applications for this year. It's really um, eye opening, I think, for, for students and graduates to go, yeah, I saw you as a food distribution company, but actually you've got all this other stuff going on, you know, and so, you know, it can be really... Um, thought provoking I think for people to go that's that's actually an industry sector I've never thought about because they don't see it as particularly related to the studying that they've done but actually that is you know as you said it's, it's like a particularly in support functions or um you know if you want to be an engineer you know as an industry sector that you can really consider that might not be in front of mind yeah definitely yeah yeah and so um, I think obviously you, you've spoke about the, the different kind of opportunities, but I think if you've lived it, what, what is it kind of like a, a, in terms of the, the job tasks that you would be expected to carry out or kind of what, what would a day look 
like for you as probably as a placement student because you were there and, and then as a graduate what what does that look like yeah no I, I could definitely tell you about that I, I want to start off with say the first week because I think a lot of the people that are probably listening are probably I think the first week is where they might it, it, there's a lot of nerves and you might be a little bit shy in the first week to get to get your grip of things and what have you so I'd say in the first week usually it's an induction they'll ex- introduce you to the team they'll introduce you to what their expectations are of you and they'll sit you down and there is, is a very light environment that they won't chuck you into the deep end as of such they'll ease you in and they'll just let you meet the team and what have you and then in the day-to-day role, and this is one of the values that Moy Park really values, is ownership, is in the six months that you have for a placement, usually typically it's a six-month placement, uh, you get given a project, for example, and you'd be given complete ownership of that project, and it's up to you as the individual to decide the best path to take in that project, mm-hmm. and, and that's what I love. It gives you the freedom to decide, right, okay, this is how I see I can, I can add value to this project. I'm going to take it in this direction. And you can get given support and what have you from your managers, from the senior managers, and even people on the floor uh, that, that are willing to help you. So you get given ownership of a project and you could see yourself doing a number of things on a day-to-day basis. It can be scheduling for a project. It can be discussing ideas it could be brainstorming it could be a day full of meetings for example it could be quite literally anything depending on which function you're in you can have a huge number of things that you could be doing day to day but as long as you're open to the ideas and and you're not nervous at the start and you're not too right okay this seems like a bigger project than myself and it's a bit overwhelming as long as you're not overwhelmed at the start you can you can find yourself doing a lot yeah and just to um to add there um when as you said about the six month placement so that'd be a six month placement before in the graduate program then you'd move on to your next placement and um, the, the placements are very much tailored around um given graduates and rotational placement students opportunities to network across different functions so for example you might be in operations but as part of your operations program you might um spend a bit of time with technical you might um be heavily linked with supply chain you might do some hot house operational excellence projects and um, so it really does give you an opportunity to kind of integrate with other departments and give you the overall understanding of how your role in your department fits in amongst the wider business yeah and I think that's so important because it, it could be easy to come in and and just be on a project that focuses solely on your department but it's not teaching you then about actually what you're doing does touch on other parts of the business or you need to collaborate with certain people you need information from different areas to get your job done or to get a project done so I think that's um a really actually nice way of being able to build build that network and um, kind of stakeholder relationship side of things um, and I suppose like now that you're um, three years in um, I say like if you look back or reflect back to when you first started um, with Moy Park I mean what would you say are the kind of the, your three biggest learnings or even biggest learning <laughs> I'm just throwing this at you because I know I've, um, I've not said this is coming but it just I thought it might be interesting for people to hear your own reflections. Yeah, no, I mean, in terms of my biggest learning is that, and I think this is what's great about the placement, rotational placement scheme, as well as the graduate scheme, is that you move around a lot and you gain a lot of experience quickly. And my biggest learning was to grasp a new environment as quick as I can and to really start right okay it's kind of jumping on a pr- uh, treadmill at this already started is right right okay i learned to adapt to environments as fast as i could because of how often i move i already know like right okay i need to get to know the team as well as i can straight away that's my number one thing when i come in and then i move along to actually the role that i'm actually there for 
because the team is is a make or break. It, the teams are every single team I've worked with, and I'd say it's pretty much every single person that I have worked with that has started at Moy Park, they always say that the people is the number one reason that they love Moy Park. And I, I say the same is for myself as well. And as soon as you get to know the people and the people get to know you, everything becomes easier. So your biggest learning is be a people person, be open, be able to communicate with them and everything from then on will just be a smooth train for you. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really good advice, actually. And um, yeah, and did you think um, when you started that you would relocate? Did you think was that something you planned, or was it you no? Know, the opportunity arose, and you just grasped it when it came up. I think for myself, I always knew that I wanted to move around. I wanted to see a little bit more because uh, for me, university was three years in one place. So that right, okay, I'm. I'm young, I've, I've got a degree, I want to move around, I want to see as much as I can, I want to meet different people. So in my eyes, I knew straight away that I was like, right, okay, I want to see as much as I can. I was open to the idea of moving. I wanted to network across Moy Park because I know that if I, I'm, I'm thinking of the future, I need to know as many people as I can if I want to build up my career. And that's exactly why I knew from the first day I walked in Moy Park was I, I'm here to build my career. So I was always open to the idea of moving. And that's a really key part of the graduate programme, actually. Um, we, you know, we were looking for candidates who are open minded and flexible about relocating. And as you said, um, you know, being based across our different sites, we're a massive company, but each site um, is run quite differently. We produce different products in our sites. You know, there's so many different teams. So to be based and spend time in some of our different sites can really build on those leadership skills, which are so important for the graduate programme. And then to then step into that senior leadership role once you come out of the graduate program in Moy Park um, it can provide so much um, experience and knowledge and, and skills um, for, for somebody compared to if you just do just stay in that one you know site or that one role or whatever so the, the graduate program is really based around that about getting people to get these skills in that short relatively short period of time really in your, in your whole a career is two or three years so yeah and that he's doing really well as he said he started in in and GB in Annex site and then he's now in Craig Avenue in Northern Ireland so who knows where you'll be next <laughs> <laughs> but it is it's a fantastic opportunity to 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 I think be able to appreciate that there are those differences even though like as you said it's one company but there are differences in in product or uh, operations or there's differences even in in the different site cultures you know because of the localities and um you know even within the uk there's different there's different cultures so you know even if, if it's expanding into europe um as well i think it gives people such an amazing opportunity to um yeah experience those those different cultures and and i think that does enhance um a lot of those soft skills that, that you mentioned that are really critical as you progress in your career yeah so yeah so yeah so obviously there's um there's amazing opportunities here for people to um apply for but what does that application process look like um you know what what are the kind of yeah is it, is it just an application form or you know is there anything else that people have to do to to, to you know submit their interest really yep so um i mentioned before that our applications for both the programs are open at the moment and um, so um application is via our website which is www.moypark.com um, and then you go to careers and it's on the early careers opportunities there and then once applications close, shortlisted candidates would then be invited to take part in a video interview. Now, this um, is where candidates are sent a couple of questions um, in advance so they can prepare for them. And then they are sent um, access to a platform, a video recording platform. So you get one opportunity to record your answers. 
but you do get the questions in advance you can prepare um, and if um, if candidates are successful at that stage then they will be invited to attend a virtual assessment centre which would be over a couple of days obviously uh, recently in the last couple of years it had to switch to virtual instead of in person um, but what we found uh, this year which was our first um, you know opportunity to do it virtually was actually worked really well and candidates felt you know they were comfortable in their own surroundings and um, we struck we structured it so that they had some team activities some opportunities to meet graduates and opportunities to speak to managers and find out more about the graduate programs and um, they do an interview and a presentation at that assessment center as well and um, so it really is all about um that that recruitment process and then shortly afterwards after the assessment center then a candidate would find out if they were successful on the program um, and that'd be at least four or five months prior to them starting in the september next year so we try and give people as much notice as possible that then they can just you know they know their job sorted they know their placement or their graduate program sorted and they can just focus on their studies then so yeah I think that's a big relief for people when they can do that rather than still have to think about you know a job search and applications as they're going through final exams and you're trying to be the best at everything <laughs> so yes. so yeah it's really good time and wise and and what's what's that like as a candidate experience that if like going through through those processes um uh, from a candidate's point of view, and I know this because I, I was a third year grad and I was, you know, you're applying, you see your friends applying, you start applying and you're applying everywhere and you have your exams as well. So you're trying to juggle everything all at once. And it's a lot. It's a lot to handle as a grad. I know that. Uh, but you got to think about what your what your future holds and you got to start planning for that. And is great to know in advance, four or five months in advance when you're a third year grad and you think, oh my, it's, it's a huge relief after you've done it. And, it, but in terms of the actual interview process and the whole grad assessment center and what have you, I actually am quite fond of assessment centers. I yeah. quite <laughs> like, like, it's weird in a way, but it's, it's, it's a good way of it's it's like unlike anything else that you would ever do you yeah. would you would never go to an assessment center other than outside of interviews and what have you so you get to meet people that you never have met you get to do activities that you never would you would would ever have done before team activities try to shine and try to work with others whilst you're there get to meet fantastic people whilst you're there you talk about them and you don't get the opportunity to really talk about yourself as much as you do as in an assessment center. Yeah. And when you're trying to plan and prepare for it and you start figuring out all the things that you've done up to that point to try and make yourself shine in an assessment center, I think it is actually a pretty good feeling because you think I have done quite a bit. I, I have a lot to talk about. I can, I can, I can make myself shine in this situation. So yeah. I think as long as you're, it, there's, there's going to be nerves. You're going to feel shy at the start. You can try and ease yourself in, but because it's a and correct me if I'm wrong, Vicky, it's a day event. The assessment two days, center. the virtual ones actually. Yeah, we've start, started to do it over two days because one full day of online is quite intense. <laughs> yeah. So we tried to split it up and break it up a little bit. But yeah, it's going to be a two day, two day thing. And then people like you know graduates like Atif are going to be there. So any questions that you might have about actual the graduate programs or what the process is like once you join the company or anything like that, that's what they're there for. Um, but I think um, the thing to remember with virtual, because obviously I think a lot of businesses are stepping into this virtual world, is that to treat it very much like you would have so it was your in person. So you know prepare in advance do your research on the company and really we've talked about our values earlier on and um, if, if make sure those values align with your own values because otherwise it needs to be a right fit for us and it needs to be a right fit for the candidate as well and um, so definitely do your research and um you know we what we're looking for is people who've got a passion for the food industry um and we want that to come across so um what i'd say is if you're obviously applying for a number of different programs or job roles um, make sure that you are um, your application is honing in on that particular one rather than because I know some candidates can very much generalize you know and you think well, why have they put that on this application where a food industry and they've talked about retail or you know it needs to definitely I know it takes a little bit more time but definitely kind of focus that on your application or in the recruitment process um, and, and be yourself ultimately like we we're you know you don't have to be 
your best self. It, it's just about, you know, you don't have to be the, the, the most chattiest. You don't have to be the one who's always at the forefront of all the activities. It's just about being yourself and those skills will come through. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important um, because a lot of a lot of the time we get the question about what employers are looking for, you know, what the ideal candidate is. And really, there isn't an ideal candidate as such. There's no perfect graduate mold. Actually, most companies want to recruit people who are different. You know, they want different perspectives. Um, and so it's really um, interesting to hear you say that. Yeah, that um, be yourself, be authentic is really important at my part. Um, so yeah. Um, and I have to say, one of the things that um, you mentioned earlier on, Atif, I, I really um, also encourage um, our students and graduates when we talk to them, it was like, as part of the placement programme, it's, it's not just finding out about what you do like, but also what you don't like. Um, and I think that's so important for anybody in their career to know, Actually, these are things that if I had to do that all day, every day, that, that wouldn't want, make me want to go to work or, you know, that, that could actually have a bit of an adverse effect on my own mental health or it would make me want to leave. And so being able to, to have the opportunity to try out all those different things as part of the development, I think is really, really helpful. Um, because it's really important to know what you don't enjoy. <laughs> like, yeah, that's exactly it. And see, that's the thing with Moy Park as well, because of how massive they are and is generally you it's hard to think about how big they are from an outside perspective but once you walk through the door and you realize how much work happens and the amount of departments and everything and because of how the schemes are all laid out you get to see a lot more than you think and you you'll find things you love you will find things that you're good at but you don't exactly enjoy and that's that's the perfect that's that's life in general and that's part of the scheme so you're coming in young you'll find out things about yourself you find out things about the company and you'll 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 work you'll work your, your career journey along with it yeah yeah and we, we spoke quite a lot about you know those um different placements and rotations around the business um, and, and what that programme looks like for, for placements and for graduates. What, what is the support like, the support network that, that you have in place um, for people joining in at that early stage in their career? Yeah, so our early careers programmes use the 70-2010 model of development. So that's based on 70% on the job learning, which is very much tailored around those movement placements and, and that kind of thing. And then we have 20% learning through others. So this is where we have mentors. So every early careers employee has a mentor, um, which might not necessarily be somebody from the same function as yourself. It could be somebody at a senior level throughout the business who is just that person to you know whether it's something that you need advice on presentation skills or a project that you manage and they can tap into those and skills and help you with that. And then that 10% um, formal learning um, we have. So the graduates do some leadership and management modules and the rotational placement students undertake development modules that are relevant to their programme and that they can then go back to university and use those soft skills there. Um, so, yeah, and in terms of um, support, um, so I mentioned the mentors, we obviously managers, which would move throughout your placement. So obviously every time you're in a new placement, you get have a new manager. So you have reviews with them. You have reviews with the HR team and also so with myself and, and the early careers team as well so there is lots of support there um I mean at if you've you're you're a pro at this now <laughs> do you think you feel supported have you got um you feel like you have lots of reviews and you know who to go to if you do have any questions or queries yeah so I it's been five years since I started with Moy Park so I can say at every single point during those five years, the one thing I've not lacked is support, no matter what the situation was, no matter where I was in life, whether it was at university or whether it was when I started the scheme or what have you. It was one thing that I never lacked. Any sort of question I had, any sort of thing I was struggling with and thinking, right, I, I need to get out of this department to try and figure out this problem because you're, you're, you're surrounded by the same people and you, you want someone's outside perspective. And that's why it's great to have a mentor so you can go to them and start discussing things and they can come back to you and you can have a chat about it and you'll think, all oh, right, I never thought of that because I've been, 
I've been in the department surrounded by the same people and what have you. I never thought about it from that point of view. And no matter what it is, no matter what the problem is, I've never lacked support whatsoever. So. And you also have, you know, an ATIF's cohort. Um, so ATIF joined the scheme in, in 2020. So ATIF's got, you know, eight other graduates there that they're also, you know, they have some reviews and catch ups and cohort meetings and things and opportunities to tap into each other, see if they've got any issues that they can discuss. And it's the same with every graduate cohort and every placement year as well. But we have we make sure even when we're all virtual and um, we're making sure that they still have those touch points with each other and finding out how everybody else is getting on and if they have anything that they want to to share and talk about together so yeah and it's good to know you're not alone <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, you know and that there's other people going through that experience at the same time as you yeah. um so yeah I think that's that's really um helpful and it sounds also like you know between things like the line managers the mentors the peer support um you know previous graduates and so on that you know that's also building on that networking aspect that you mentioned earlier you know and really helping you to I suppose get a sense of the wider company rather than just where, where you're you're based at any given point yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely really good so what would be um from both of you what would be your kind of top advice or tips that you would give um to candidates as they apply to, to Moy Park do you, do you want to go ahead with that, Vicky? Yeah. I can jump in. Yeah. So um, so we're really looking for people who are passionate about the food industry, passionate about a career in Moy Park, um, you know, who are looking to the future. So even if you're a, a placement student looking for that one year placement, um, you know, start thinking about, oh, actually, Moy Park to a graduate programme, is that something that I'd want to go in? Because that obviously if the year in placement went really well, then that's an opportunity. Um, and about um, what function um, you're passionate about as well. So we mentioned that there's, you know, nine different functions in the graduate programme. But what are your strengths? What are your interests? And and yet yeah, somebody who's open minded and flexible um, and you know, wanting to um, look at things in a new way. And definitely you touched on it earlier. So um, people who have got new ideas, that's what we want, you know, in, in the business. And you do, you know, we do want to, to fulfill that future talent pipeline. So it's about bringing your new ideas in and, and, and wanting that to, um, to integrate yourself into the business. Yeah, sounds good. And what about you, Ati? Uh, no, pretty much along the same lines, I'd say, and I'd say this to everyone coming out of university is you are a valued part of society. You come out of university, you've got a degree, you are headhunted by companies, people want you and know that about yourself before you come into a company, before you come into assessment centers, everything that you are what they want. And when you come in, be open, showcase what you have to offer because not everybody has a degree, not everybody has gone through those three years. It's it's hard and you've done it and this company wants you because of that. So showcase your talents, be open, get to know the people, um, showcase the ideas that you've had. You've had three years to build yourself as a person and that's all you have to do. Just showcase yourself, show your talents, show what you're good at, be open and everything else would just fall in line. And I think um, what I said there, um, you know, we when you if you are applying for the programs um, it's not just work experience that we want to hear about you know if you're on a sports team or you know you're you're a club leader or anything like that any hobbies or anything where you've shown and demonstrated your teamwork or your leadership skills bring them into the recruitment process whether it's your application or your video interview or your assessment center at the assessment center bring all those skills in because as I said you know you're you and it doesn't matter what your experience is it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be paid work and um, you know let us know that showcase that and then um, it, it's called about brand you I, I don't know if you've heard of that term but yeah you're the brand and you know you want to share that with people and hopefully it's a great match and yeah 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 I think that's really a uh, great advice and and I think it goes back to that that whole aspect that you are wanting people to be themselves um, and you know that's that's the whole their whole self. You know, it isn't just like yeah, you you've had experience that's relevant to this industry sector. You know, everyone's got like that those different aspects of their life across family, you know, interests, 
um, you know, other extracurricular activities they might be involved in, um, plus any work experience they've got, um, you know, but it, I think it's, it's great for employers to be able to see, yeah, you can um, work as part of a team, you know, in a university project, but you can also work as part of a team when you're playing a sport or, you know, when you're supporting the people in a volunteering kind of um situation you know so it's, it's great to be able to see that in more than one context yeah. so yeah also I would definitely encourage that for candidates <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah it's been so great to to hear more about Moy Park about the the programs that you offer about the support that you offer and and the the just the amazing opportunities that are there for people to not only come in and start their career but also to grow their careers um with with Moy Park and it certainly sounds like Atif is definitely taking that on board um, and is doing that very well. So um, for everyone um, who's listening, who is interested in, in making an application or learning more about Moy Park, then all of the details that, that Vicky's already mentioned, the website, um, the application dates um, and and like kind of um, links to their social media sites will be in the description below so you can access everything from there directly and um, also we'll put on there the um, links for Vicky and Atif's um, LinkedIn profiles you know so that you've you can access them directly um, obviously try not to inundate them too much but you know um, they are there um, if you want to reach out with any direct questions to them um, but similarly, if you've got any questions that relate directly to the process itself, then through the website, you'll be able to access um, the right the right links and, and frequently asked questions and things like that um, around about the application. So um, definitely lots of sources for information there on how to apply to Moy Park to join their team. Um, also, don't forget to like, follow and subscribe, and then you will get access to more of the Graduate Ambitions um, podcasts, and they will include um, access also to kind of tools and advice to support you in your job search, as well as sessions like this one with Atif and Vicky um, talking about what their organisation at Moy Park can offer. So I will let you all go on with your day, um, but thanks very much for listening. Bye.